Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to God Conversations Church. This is the church where we are preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are loving on you, God's people, and we are watching God change lives one conversation at a time. Listen, I'm going to ask on this morning, if you will, will if you will, share and invite, tag someone, and let them know that God Conversations is on where we agree and decree that God is changing lives one conversation at a time. Sister Judy Bell, I heard you that you need this song in your playlist. I might sing you this music so when you're doing your offering and you're marching around the table, you can march like my Aunt Ada used to do. Put a two-step in your march. Come on, let's share this on this morning and good morning to all of you all once again. And let me be the first to say I live to love you and I fight for you daily. I need somebody to just type some words on here this morning. Just describe how good God has been to you on this morning. If he's been good, my father used to say, you ought to show some signs. this morning. I believe she's at the hospital, but we are praying that even on this morning, God is going to reconstruct some things in your favor. Oh, the Lord got a word for you on this morning, sister. I promise you, he got a word for you on this morning. Just tap your neighbor in the room and say he got a word for you on this morning. Yeah, I don't have no doubt. He's going to work it out. Why are you trying to figure it out? He's already worked it out. Good morning, everyone. The hour is 7.31, and we are about to flood this social media with the glory of God on this morning. I just need you to tag 10 people on this morning and let them know we are about to preach this gospel of Jesus Christ. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God and in the mountain of his holiness. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up the everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. There's nobody like our God. I wish you'd help me sing it. Wonderful. Marvelous. He's great and he's mighty. Excellent and is holy. Somebody calls him Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and he's the end. Somebody else called him Sovereign, Savior. And I
Jesus' blessings and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever. Lord, you deserve honor. Come on, tag so somebody in the room this morning and say, the Lord deserves the glory. And, we'll do it forever. and he and deserves forever. the honor. You deserve glory. This song is by All Corey Williams. Originally from and Savannah, so right Georgia, now, now located in Atlanta, Georgia, attends Rehab Church. You can go on iTunes and download this Corey Williams. O-R-Y. Let's crank this up. It gets better at the end. received his mandate to deliver the children of Israel from the bondage of Egypt. He asked the Lord a question, who shall I say sent me? And the Lord said, tell him I am sent you. Now, I don't know what you've been going through, but the Lord told me to tell you the great I am is on the way to your house. And I've come to declare to you that if it's bad enough, he's God enough. Good morning to all of you all. That was my, what I call, he calls me Uncle Pat. That is Elder Corey Williams, originally from Savannah, Georgia. Now he's in Atlanta, Georgia. He attends Rehab Church. He is an awesome psalmist, um, awesome friend, awesome man of God. Listen, go download that song. I believe it will bless you. You are God. We still need to hear, hear his name in this generation well listen good morning to all of you all and i play a couple of my friends song um minister um drew baxter um has a new song out evangelist yael hilton i play one of her songs um destiny is one of our featured songs on here written by malachi singleton featuring um brother calvin ford here in the city of savannah georgia also um minister michael j holloway from jacksonville champion um, which has been our theme song since we have started God Conversations. And so, and that was Corey Williams on this morning. <clears throat> and I can't wait until soon. We'll be playing some other music that will be coming out. I have many friends in the music industry and thank God for what he is doing in all of their lives. Listen, I hope you are ready for the word of the Lord on today. Listen, next week, tell someone I will be in Orlando, Florida. If you are joining us in Orlando, Florida next week, just type sent it. 
we're going to get scented next week. <laughs> scented. Good morning. I am excited about our first scent of the seasons, the scent of the servant um, development um, retreat. And I just thank the Lord for what he is doing in all of our lives and for you all who have decided to take time and to come. I want you all to pray for me. Um, I have a lot going on right now, but I believe God is going to be glorified. Amen. I'm excited. Amen. And I thank God in this season, we do not walk alone, but everything attached to us wins. I am about to witness your next win and it is so i thank god for sister don thurland um my daughter down in orlando florida she had to take some of the weight off of us this um this week so she's helping us prepare some things um for the conference and i just thank god for it um so if i have not told you all let me tell you that i appreciate all of you all um my brother steve and the brothers that will be there steve is coming in from ohio um this is my new Yakad in the spirit. Thank God for Brother Ali and Brother Charlie. Um, um, I believe um, Apostle Franklin will be attending. Prophetess Norma Hodges, Tiffany, I don't know how many people she's registered. I think she's almost about 20 people um, <laughs> that will be in attendance. And I'm just excited about what the Lord is doing. Um, Brother Rodney that will be coming in. Um, different brothers. There's even some husbands that say, hey, are men welcome? And so the wife said, yeah. And so the husband said, well, I want to come too. I want to be with the brothers. And so we thank the Lord for what he is doing. Um, and I'm just excited about it. Listen, let's pray on this morning as you are sharing, you are tagging um, Tanya Bernie. Um, tell my goddaughter I haven't seen her all week, so I need to see her name this morning. Father, give us what we need for this assignment. Nothing more, nothing less. Release your predestined power that causes men and women, boys and girls, saints and sinners, to be transformed to the very image of your son, Jesus Christ. And when you do these things, we shall give your name all the glory and all the honor. And it is so in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. There's an old song that I used to hear growing up in the Baptist and the Sanctified Church. Um, my growing up, um, my father was a Pentecostal preacher. But I attended also my first place of um, employment in the church was the Baptist Church. Thank God for the Baptist Church in Jesus' name. My first place of employment was Friendship Missionary Baptist Church, Cambo Avenue. And I remember that they would <clears throat> sing a song called There's a Leak in This Old Building. And I want you to understand on this morning, and, and something's got to move. Somebody got to move. I need you to hear it on this morning. Uh huh. I want you to hear it. Sometimes the enemy does not understand that sometimes he is being used to focus you. He is being used to shift you in a place that you would not have arrived without some type of attack. Can you just type on this morning to the believer, my attacks are even anointed. My attacks are even ordained. I want you to hear it on this morning. <clears throat> I got my essential water on this morning. I got my anointed water. Ah, yes, God. Yes. I want you to hear on this morning sometimes what you are dealing with. It is causing you to focus and you think that I feel like I'm losing something. I feel like I'm about to lose my mind, but I just want to I just want to tell you on this morning, you are about to win in places. Watch this that the enemy never wanted you to arrive. What, Tiffany, would we have ever imagined that I believe when we started Tanya and I believe Ashley was a founding member of God Conversations and Jamie was a founding member of the church and this online ministry. I would have never imagined that we would have started <clears throat> in my Ford Explorer. Uh-huh. When the Lord said, I want you to go online in the morning. I would have never imagined that, watch this, that we would have started online in a truck. Uh-huh. Sometimes it was foggy. Uh-huh. Sometimes it was cold. Sometimes it was hot. But we stayed the course. I would have never imagined three and a half years later that the Lord would have, watched this, erected a congregation. We've taken the ministry of when women worship. Uh-huh. Two different places we've taken um when we worship to new york 
Europe. We've been to New Jersey. We've been to D.C. We've been to Florida. We've been to different places, and the Lord has blessed us. I want you to hear it simply because we didn't allow the attacks that was associated with the assignment to stop us. Wait a minute. Never allow mm -hmm, the attacks that are associated with your assignment to stop you. I would have never imagined Elder died. We people didn't know it that when COVID hit and I had to go into the building and there was times that I would say, well, Minister Nicole, I want you to, to preach. And then one time I believe the pilot went out in the church and so it was cold. I said, well, I don't want you to go in the building and preach. So I'm going to preach the whole week. But no one knew that I had to tell Jamie, hey, I need you to bring me something. And so Jamie had to bring me a space heater and I put two space heaters beside my feet and I still preached the gospel in a cold building because I wasn't going to allow y'all not hearing me on this morning. I didn't own the building. I rented the building, but they took too long to come back and light the pilot. But I still had to preach be instant in season and out of season. Y'all ain't going to hear me. This, this is this is old school preaching right here. I still had to put the two heaters up under my feet under this table right here. And I still had to preach and say, good morning and welcome to God conversations where we are preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, even though my toes are cold and you are not discerning it. But listen, we are believing that God is going to change lives one conversation at a time. You never, you never know what it takes to wake up in the morning and do what God has called you to do. But I'm about to shift somebody on this morning because what you are about to put your hands to, it is going to invoke an attack. But I want you to know that the oil never starts flowing until the attack shows up. I want you to hear it on this morning. You never saw the demonstration of the awe that was on David's life until the attack showed up in a place where it did not belong, but it had purpose. You better hear it. It did not belong, Natasha, but it had purpose. Can somebody just type on this morning? This enemy right here don't belong in my life. This attack don't belong on my body, but it got purpose on this morning. And after I understand the purpose of a thing, then I'm going to get the victory over it. My God, today, can we just preach the gospel on this morning? I feel something on this morning. Tag somebody in the room and say, I'm winning on this morning. I'm winning on this morning. Everything attached to me on this morning wins. I am about to witness your next win to every preacher that's listening to me on this morning. I need you to understand that this is not the season to be comfortable, but this is the season to try out your kingdom capacity. How far can God stretch you in this season how much favor do you really have in this season you better hear it I know you want to do the work of the Lord I know you want to preach I know you want to prophesy but on this morning I feel a stretch in capacity oh my God when you gonna really try out the power of God that's on your life when you gonna really try out the favor that's on your life now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundant above all that we could ask or think if you really gonna trust him then you gotta put some you gotta put some demands on him my god my god my father said listen you gotta take god off the program and my godmother Lottie Edwards said and you got to put god to the test what do you mean do i have enough faith to make god demonstrate his power to demonstrate his his glory to demonstrate his faithfulness in this do i have enough faith oh my god Ooh, oh my god we're being stretched on this morning how can you shift without being stretched how can you shift Wahiba without being stretched? How can you go over to the other side without being stretched? How can you get a victory without being stretched? Every one of us who've ever played sports on here, if you ran track, if you did ballet, whatever you've done, the most, the, the most essential part of the practice is the stretching. Mm -hmm. They tell you before you run, you got to stretch. Uh -huh. And the stretch, listen, the stretch feels worse than the activity. Activity. Y'all, y'all not y'all not gonna talk to me on this morning. But when someone begins to stretch you, oh my God! When they begin to stretch you, and when we we played football, and you would have to get down, and you would have to have a partner. You better catch it. You would have to have a partner, and then they would put you on the ground, and then you would have to lay back, and they would say, "Now push them as far as they can go." And every now and then, y'all ain't gonna talk to me on here this morning. But brother Rodney, ever sometimes when they were stretching your arms back, and I like, come on, man, come on, come on. 
on that line. Now that you got to take it, you got to take it. And they keep stretching to the point you say, man, I can't take it no more. And they keep stretching. And after a while, you feel something touching in the back. I need to, I need you to catch this on this morning. Sometimes, Sister Demeter, the Lord will assign somebody to you to help you stretch until you touch what you never thought you could reach. Y'all not going to hear me on this morning. You, you, you thought you would never touch that, that place right there. You never thought you would reach that goal. But sometimes you need somebody to stretch you until you begin to feel what God promised you. Oh, my God. And this is the thing, Brother Rodney Johnson, every now and then, every now and then when they were stretching us and they were stretching and stretching, I'm like, oh, my God, how long are you going to stretch me? Oh, my God, I just felt the Kelly Wood voice. How long are you going to stretch me? Oh, my God, you just keep pulling and you keep pulling. After a while, there's a, there's a little tear that comes from the side. It's not because, watch this, I don't want to be stretched. This is just uncomfortable to me. Oh, y'all better hear me this morning. Even when you, oh my God, my God, my God, I feel something shifting right here. When you are being stretched, sometimes I'm not crying because I can't handle it. I'm crying because it's uncomfortable. Am I talking to anyone on this morning that can say, Pastor, I woke up this morning and there's some things in my life that are uncomfortable. But guess what? I just want to tell the enemy I can take it. Uh huh. There's some things that made me cry on last week but guess what uh -uh. but listen I can take it there's some things that I'm waiting for God to turn around in this season but I can take it there's some folks that's getting on my nerves oh yes they are but I can take it I just need to testify to somebody on this morning there is no test on this morning that you're facing that you cannot take it oh my God um first Corinthians turn 10 and 13 for there is no temptation taking you there is no test that's taken you but such as common to man but God is faithful who will not suffer you to be attempted above what you are able to bear even in the season of honor you gonna escape and you going to excel oh my God I need somebody to type on this morning I'm about to escape and I shall excel in every place that the Lord has planted my feet mm. Oh my God, listen, I feel this. Listen, listen, let, let, let me go to this, this verse here on this morning. You saying, Pastor, wh where we're going this morning? I, I promise you, we about to get somewhere. It ain't even eight o'clock, but I promise you, well, the Lord going to flip this thing. Watch this. The Bible says, here it is. Uh-huh. This is Jesus talking. And he says in the text, uh-huh. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, listen to John's gospel. Even so must the son of man be lifted up. Uh-huh. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life uh -huh. for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him I feel preaching power this morning believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved type some in the room and say this is the gospel he that believeth on him is not condemned but he that believeth not is condemned already because he have not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God I, when, when I woke up this morning sister Tiffany and I came to my desk mm -hmm, the, the Lord began to give me something uh -huh, about the, the, the watch this the sacrifice and the scent the sacrifice and the sin. We got to preach this on this morning. The sacrifice and the sin. And, and Sister Wahiba, when I begin to look at this thing, uh -huh, the Lord began to give me some. He said, I want you to understand that the sin is the assignment. Uh -huh, uh -huh. The sin was the assignment of Calvary. Watch this. The sin was the substance on Calvary. That's okay. Okay, Lord, you got to help me with this on this morning. I, I begin to write. Don't y'all don't y'all laugh at me. I know my penmanship don't look like y'all can't see that i just did a donald trump watch this you, you can't see the writing watch this where there is a sacrifice there should be an odor slash scent uh-huh where there is a sacrifice there should be an odor and there should be a scent we're gonna work it in a moment we're just gonna come together in a moment watch this Isaiah said, I want you to see this here in the text here. Let, here we go. Isaiah. Is that it? Uh-huh. Isaiah says, and watch this. Who have believed our report? 
And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of a dry ground. He have no form nor calmliness. And when we shall see him, uh -huh. There is no beauty that we should desire. He is despised and rejected of men and a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Watch this. And the, he said, and guess what did we do? He said, and we hid, acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised. And we esteemed him not. I, I was looking at this this morning. I was trying to figure out, Lord, what, what are you saying in, in this text? And he said, I, I want you to see something on this morning. I said, okay. And, and he began to show me the, the scented and the sacrifice. The scented and the sacrifice, the odor and the scent. So I'm sitting here and I'm writing and, and I'm listening to worship. I'm listening to some worship music, and I'm trying to understand, okay, Lord, Lord, what are you saying? What are you saying in this? And I begin to look at this elder Prince Purcell, and the Lord began to show me that when Jesus is depicted on Calvary, he is not just the lamb, but he's also the temple. I, I understand, years ago, I remember, help me, Holy Ghost, I remember when I was attending, mm-hmm, uh, Christ Gospel Church, um, Bishop John Godbold, and I believe we were on South Plymouth Street then. And I was attending Reed Ross Junior High School. And I remember when I would go to church on um, nights when he would teach Bible study. And there was a image of Jesus Christ on the wall um, that hung behind him. And in the, on, on the body of Jesus Christ, Holy Ghost, help me to see this thing. I would see the, I would see the, the candlesticks and I would, see, uh -huh, I would see the churches and then I would see the, the feet, the brazen feet. And I would see the law uh -huh, and I would see the blood and I would see the crown. And I would see the piercing and I would see all the things that Jesus body represented the lamb and the temple. I need you to hear this on this morning. When we look at the crucifixion of Jesus, we cannot just look at him as the lamb slain without looking at him as also the temple. Watch this. He never referred to himself as the lamb. He referred to himself as the temple. I'm trying to help somebody this morning. Tiffany, y'all come on and walk with me. Come on and walk with me. You never heard Jesus refer to himself as the lamb he referred to himself as the temple i'm going to say it again he did not refer to himself as the lamb slain uh-huh he referred to himself as the temple the reason that we refer to him as the lamb slain because we needed a blood sacrifice uh-huh but he understood if god is going to erect the church that he saw in eden y'all not gonna hear me if he's going to erect the vision that he saw in Eden with Adam and Eve, then he's going to need a structure that's impenetrable. Oh my God, today. And, and when we look at this thing, Isaiah says, I need you to see that when we shall see him, I feel something shifting right now can somebody say there's a shift taking place right now there's a shift taking place right now you, you got to understand elder die that when we when we look at the scripture you never hear Jesus refer to himself as the lamb uh-uh because -uh. he, he didn't refer to himself as the lamb he but he did refer to himself as a temple he said and if they destroy this temple in three days I'll raise it back up y'all better y'all better hear what the Holy Ghost gave who y'all better hear what the Holy Ghost gave me on this morning I got to preach it just like he gave it to me sister Shakita on this morning when we look at the blood and we look at Christ and I know we don't hear this much anymore but the gospel still needs to be preached and we need to understand the worthiness of the sacrifice and what it produced on Calvary brother Rodney Johnson I feel something in the room this morning there's a shift taking place when we understand what Calvary did for us sister Courtney Wells, where you sitting right now? We, listen, the blood is still on every aspect of your life. Isaiah said, look at him, Patrick. When we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire in him. But he's a man acquainted with griefs and sorrows. And we did a deem him smitten and stricken of God. And we hid our faces from him. But surely he has borne our grief. 
Elder Prince Purcell, I hope you're praying for me on this morning because I feel the corner turning. I feel it turning. I was writing this morning. Oh, my God. And I was writing. I said, Lord, what are you saying this morning? And, and the question came to me and it said, watch this, watch this. My sacrifice produces a scent. Mm -mm, mm -mm, we going somewhere this morning. My sacrifice produces a scent. I said, okay, Lord, I, I need to understand what you're saying. He said, the question arose in my spirit. Watch this. And in my mind, can we smell blood? I said, wait a minute, can, can, we, can we smell blood? Can, can we smell blood? And, and, and Tasha, I, I had to go look at this. Can, can we smell blood? And so I have to do some research, uh-huh. And it says that, watch this, that, that the doctors say that when you smell blood, watch this, it is likened into, it is, it is almost like iron and water. Watch this together, it's blended together, but it smells, y'all not ready. You're not ready for this. You're not ready for this. It smells, watch this. It smells like metal and paper. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. T T Tiffany, T Tiffany, I'm going to make you proud this morning. I promise you. I know you got more degrees than me, but I promise you I'm going to make you proud this morning. Watch this. I, I need you to understand that when I went and studied this, it said, okay, that w w in blood, there's iron uh huh, and there's water. You know, there's many things that make up blood. Why he but go with me. Watch this. I got, my, I, got my, I got my medical person on here, but watch this. But then it said, but the smell of blood is like metal and paper. I'm sitting here. I'm, I said, God, what, what, what does this have to do with this sacrifice? He said, well, Patrick, you got to understand. He was the temple. He was a structure. And if we would modernize the text, watch this. It would be metal. Y'all better hear me. When structures are built in this generation, they are built out of metal. Y'all better hear this on, on this morning. So when we look at Jesus on Calvary, we see the structure, uh-huh, but we still see the paper, which is the word. Y'all not gonna go with me on this morning. And the word was God and the word was with God and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld the glory of the only begotten. Y'all better hear this on this morning. When I look at Calvary on this morning of the die, uh, uh, watch this, I started seeing it different at about 6.59 this morning because when he showed me, when you look at Calvary, you gotta see the structure of the temple and you got to see the word that was oh my god today you better hear it you got to see the structure and you got to see the word so when we look at calvary isaiah said he said whose report what paper y'all not hearing me he said he said whose report shall we believe and whom is the arm of the lord revealed unto he said when we see him there's no beauty in this demise there's no beauty in this sacrifice there's nothing to there's nothing to be attracted to but guess what it's still the assignment of the blood y'all not hearing me on this morning it's not attractive but it's still the assignment can i preach to somebody on this morning it don't look good it don't smell good it don't feel good but it's still the assignment that's about to bring forth the scent of life abundantly it's about to bring forth the scent of healing in your life it's about to bring forth the scent of deliverance in your life it's about to bring the scent of provision in your life everywhere you look on this morning you see structure and you see the blood oh my god Reggie daughter, you better quicken on this morning and get excited, son. I'm tired of crying over what ain't going to change. So I'm going to start crying over what God has done. We see the blood and we see the paper. Oh, my God. Mm. Why, why he, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Uh, anybody seeing structure on this morning? Anybody seeing structure on this morning? I know the enemy may be fighting you here and fighting you there, but I just woke up this morning to tell you that guess what? Even though Jesus is on the cross, he said there's only one sign that you're going to see. As Jonah was in the belly of the well three days, so shall the Son of Man be in the earth. But when I come up, 
<laughs> even though the odor that was on the cross it was offensive to some uh -huh. even though the blood that was shed uh -huh, it was offensive to some he said but if you give me three days I'm going to raise up another fragrance I'm going to raise up another sin I'm going to raise up another authority and I just need to preach to somebody on this morning just give me three days and I promise you you're going to experience something that you ain't never seen before y'all ain't going to go with me this morning but I feel the blood and the word on this morning can somebody type in the comments I feel the blood and the word on this morning when I look at Calvary on this morning I got to see the blood but I also see the temple and Jesus said if you destroy this body if you destroy this temple in three days I'm going to raise up another fragrance my God today Oh, God, Don, you know the Lord gave me this. Look, Latoya, if you destroy this body, if you destroy this temple, in three days, I'm going to raise it up. And I just need you to understand on this morning what the enemy thought he was destroying. God was using him to help develop. And I need you to just catch this on this Friday morning, and we're going to have victory until Monday. Even though the enemy thought that last trial was going to destroy you, that last encounter was going to destroy you that is the very theme that God used to develop who I am on today and now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think through the power that worketh in us what is the power that's working pastor I got the blood and I got the word somebody say I got the blood and I got the word on my life this morning it may not smell good when I'm going through it but Job said but after he gets through trying me Woo, I shall come forth as pure gold. Hear it on this morning. Mm. Does the blood have a scent? Yes, it does. Does the blood have a scent? Yes, it does. And even though the odor may not be attractive, attractive, it is still going to produce the right aroma. A sweet smelling savior in it. You, you got to hear it. You got to hear it on this morning. The Lord Holy Spirit is speaking to me this morning. He said, I want you to tell the people on this morning. They have to understand. That as they sacrifice. The scent. Begins to grow. Ha! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm not trying in this season. I just want somebody to catch the sin of Calvary. I just want somebody to catch the sin of the blood. Want somebody to just catch the sin of the nails in his hands and the, the nails in his feet and the piercing of his side. We're talking about a lot of things that are inspirational. But are we preaching what is edifying to the believer and to the unbelieving sinner? He said, watch this. Let's go back to the text. Here it is. I'm almost there. He said, watch this. Here it is, Tiffany. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so, must the son of man be lifted up? Now you have to understand historically in that text. Let me, let me give you some, some backdrop. When anytime you hear the serpent, when Moses lifted up the serpent, it was the brazen serpent when they were coming out of Egypt and they were going around the mountain and when they arrived to Mount Hebron. And the Lord said, I need you to lift up the brazen serpent. And he said, and those that look upon that serpent will be healed. I need you to hear this. Sometimes you got to look at your, watch this. You got to look at your unattractive season. And your unattractive season will confirm your assignment. David said in Psalms 54, my eyes have seen the desire of the Lord upon my enemies. And sometimes we are upset and we get, we become saddened by what God allows but sometimes you got to look up and see victory even in this. Look at the text. I'm almost there. He said, be lifted up that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have ever, but shall have eternal life. Watch this. Watch this. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but shall have eternal life. Do, do you hear this on this morning? I need it. Thank you. It's a, it may be an unattractive season, but it's going to confirm your assignment. I want you to hear this on this morning. I never saw this in the text before. But I want you to see this on this morning. When we look at Calvary, we have to see the temple 
and we got to see the word. Lawana, this 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 is changing my life forever right here. This, this 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 conversation this morning is changing something forever. When we look at Calvary, for now and for the rest of the days of your life, when you look at Calvary, you have to see the temple, the structure, but you also have to see. Watch this. It says. Watch this. That blood smells like paper. You got to see the word. And the word was God and the word was with God. And the word became flesh and we beheld the glory of the only begotten son. You, you better hear it on this morning. I, I just need you to understand on this morning we're winning because we have a structure that cannot be destroyed. Jesus said, watch this. He said, even... Watch this. He said, even if you destroy this structure, even if you destroy this temple, I'm still going to raise it up in three days. God, the only triune God, God, the father, God, the son, God, the Holy Spirit. He said, even if you destroy this temple, if you give me three days, I'm going to raise up a win. Can you just type in the comments this morning to somebody, Sabrina Shelton, God is about to raise up a win for Courtney this morning. He's about to raise up a win for somebody on this morning. I, I Listen, he's about to raise up a win in your life. Mm. Some of you all own this year. What the enemy wanted to be become your warfare. It became your win. And I want to prophesy to you on this morning that what you depicted as your warfare is becoming your win. You say, well, that don't sound like a prophecy. Well, prophecy also means confirmation. So I'm bringing you comfort on this morning. That which, my God today, my God today, that which you looked at as just warfare, on this morning, God is about to raise up a win in your life. I want you to understand on this morning, and Prophetess Sherry, let me release this word to you. I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, tell, tell this woman of God that you are in a season of flowing promises. Who shut the mind? I heard the Spirit of the Lord say that this word is for Prophet Sherry on here. Because that is what she is. That's what the Lord showed me. She's prophetess. Um, but it's also for some of you all that's listening. Whoo, my God today. I want you to hear this. Flowing promises. And I see, I, I got to show you all this. Oh my gosh. I wish I had some glitter and some paper. I, I, I want you to, I, I want you to just go with me for a moment. I want you to, to imagine water. Yeah. 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 When, when, when you think about water, and you think about how water flows. Prophet, as the Lord said, you're in a season of flowing promises. It's almost like I see water. Mm. I see it. It's almost like water that is flowing, but in the water, there are words and there are promises, there are petitions. Yeah, let, let, me, let me show y'all this. I, I, thank you. I, I just got to show it to you like I see it. If, if you look at this behind me, this is how I see it. When you, when you think about water and you think about how water flows, um, this, this, this behind me, the water is constantly moving. It's constantly moving. It's constantly moving. But what I see is those petitions that you are believing God for. All these little sparks here. That's how it's flowing. Thank you, Jesus. 
So this is this is why we are, this is why we so into ministry so we can do it in excellence. I want you to hear this. So so when you're looking at this elder daughter, you're looking at sister Sheree. All these sparkles here, are, these, these represent elements that's in the water. And and actually the theme of this graphic is called underwater. So even though <laughs> my I'm under the flow, I'm under the current. And I want you to hear on this morning that prophet, is, that's how the Lord showed me that thing. He said, it's almost like you just got promises and petitions. And the Lord said, they're just flowing now. I've created a current just for you. I've created a current for some of these on here. And everywhere you look, there's a flow. There's a flow. There's a flow. Y'all better hear this on this morning. There's a flow. Everywhere you look, Don, in your business, there's a flow. To your family, there's a flow. I, I, I just got to testify on this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I don't feel like crying this morning. Thank you, Jesus. But Father, we thank you for the, the flow of favor. We thank you for the flow of provision. I, I, was, I was talking to Don yesterday. And I carry my people. I carry you all. In the last couple of months, the last two years was kind of rough for her. Even physically. When I talked to her on yesterday... And she had been through a procedure and a surgery <clears throat> recently. And then she said, Pastor, this is what I'm doing now. I'm planning businesses. I'm investing in this. This is what I'm about to do. And I said, God, I thank you for the flow. Because it, it was rough at first and many of you all didn't know it. <clears throat> and she said, Pastor, I need you to pray. And she was going through something at one time. And another person was going through the same thing at the same time in the ministry. I said, we're going to pray and God is going to regulate this thing. And God did it for both of them. I can't say what it was. But I just want you to say, I just want you to know that what God did for Don, he did for another person in the ministry. And I believe that is what's taking place right now on this morning, Elder Prince Purcell. I believe that God, do you see how timely that was? God said, listen, tell Sherry. Tell prophetess that there is her promises. They're in a flow now. And so when you think about this, even behind me this morning, Brother Rodney, you see how that water is just flowing? That's what favor is doing in your life now. Favor is flowing to every area of your life. Elder died just like the four rivers out of the Garden of Eden. Uh huh. Th listen, favor is flowing to every area of your life. From the north, the south, the east, and the west. Job said, I go forward, I go be backwards, I go to the left, I go to the right. He said, I can't perceive where God is right now. He said, but you know something? But he knows the way that I take. And he said, and after he gets through trying me, I shall come forth as pure gold. I would have never imagined Minister Cedric Thornton is sitting in a cold truck three and a half years ago. Not even being able to afford one camera. And I said, Tiffany, I want to take this ministry to another level. I would have never imagined in three years we would have purchased probably twenty to thirty thousand dollars worth of equipment. Don't owe nobody for any of it. And the Lord gave us everything that we needed because we gave Him a yes. So even as we're launching now, we're releasing. We expand the capacities. We we have partners in Atlanta, partners in North Carolina, partners in New Jersey, New York, Mississippi, um, different places. Um, I mean, the Lord is just expanding us internationally. It's because we believe in the saving works of Jesus Christ. The, I don't have another message to preach, Elder Prince Purcell. The only thing I have to preach is the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not going to create another message. I'm not going to demise the message. I know we live in a, a generation where a lot of things are contaminated, but I'm not going to alter my assignment to accommodate anyone's appetite. I believe if we preach the gospel, there's no other message that we have to preach. We can be persuasive, but I'll rather be purposeful. Hear me. We can be persuasive, but I would rather be purposeful. You all that are watching on this morning, I want you to understand that the Lord has put you in a good place. And listen, some of you all, I, I got to tell you, you keep running here and there, running here and there. And you're not settled because you don't know where your substance comes from. When you understand where your substance and your scent comes from, 
that's when the Lord will begin to settle your steps. And I want you to understand on this morning, thank you, Elder, I have no other gospel to preach but Jesus Christ and him alone. Listen, on this morning, if you don't remember anything else, God has equipped you, he's anointed you, not just to be a sacrifice, but also to produce a scent. The scent of the servant. That's where he's taken us. I believe it's going to be so powerful next week. I don't even, listen, I haven't written down one note. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I haven't written down one note. Because the only thing I want the Lord to give me, I want him to give me what I need for the assignment. Nothing more and nothing less. Hear this on this morning. On this morning, I need some tier one people on this morning. Mm. On this morning, I want you to type on this morning a consistent flow. A consistent flow. A consistent flow. People say, well, Pastor, why do you ask people to sow? Well, simply because if, if I didn't ask people to sow when I had to talk about water and flow, I wouldn't have been able to do this. So one thing that anyone know about God conversations, you can go back and look at this three and a half years. In the words of Bishop Patterson, we've used the money what we said we was going to use it for. I would have never imagined Tiffany going from my truck that I would that we would be hosting at Embassy Suites in Orlando, Florida, where people have purchased tickets and, and purchased hotel rooms, and it ain't no cheap hotel rooms. <laughs> but the Lord said, you, he said, but, but my favor going to be in your fragrance, in your fabric. I would have never imagined that. And now that people are traveling here and they're like, they've already booked their rooms, plane tickets. To the point now that we can hire someone and say, we need you to bring our ministry equipment in so we don't have to pay someone to bring the ministry equipment in. Y'all not hearing me. And we started at zero, but we had everything that we needed to win when we said yes. On this morning, I need, and I told Sister Tiffany, I need 20 people on here this morning. This is the seed I'm going to take this morning. And I told Tiffany, I said this morning, I said this morning, I need 20 people to sow a $100 seed. That is the seed for this Friday, this fortified Friday. And I'm going to tell you this seed on this morning is going to go into this man of God's life. Most of the time we sow, the money goes straight to the ministry. And you all have been doing well, but this seed on this morning... I'm giving the people the opportunity to sow into this man of God's life. And you all don't hear that much. Because trust me, when you all do it, I send it somewhere else. I send it to this account. I send it to this account. Because I want to make sure that the ministry is good. So even before we arrive in Orlando, Florida, Deacon Ali, the bill is paid. We don't have to go to the table and say we need 20 more dollars. We need 100 more dollars. No, we don't have to do that. In the words of Prophet Bottom, you got to be able to afford the budget when you start it. And so I thank God for what the Lord is doing so we can enter in peace. We are going to sow a seed in um, Florida. We always do. And some of you have already asked. So I'm asking those that will when you come just to, for the entire weekend, if you can. If you can do it as a family, do it as an individual, just a $250 seed. But on this morning, those that are going to sow that $100 seed, I want to do this in three minutes. Um, you're going to sow this morning and you can sow to the same place. But this seed this morning goes to this leader and I don't think I've taken up a seed for me since probably my birthday um, and I don't even think I did it then I think Tiffany did it but on this morning if you are in agreement with what the Lord is doing I want you to sow a seed into Pastor Patrick's life this is not a ministry seed today that goes into the ministry it's going into my life all right so on this morning you can sow a matter of fact on this morning I'm gonna have to give you some different instructions on this morning if you are sowing you're going to have to sow at PastorPatrickP at gmail.com or you're going to have to sow at Kingdom Sowers and I can receive it there or you can sow at PayPal, all right? And as a matter of fact, you can sow it at um, Text to Give because that's easier for you and Tiffany, we can just transfer it. But on this morning, if you're going to sow on this morning, I want you to just type on this morning, Support Pastor. That's it. Just type support pastor, Pastor P, whatever you want to say. On this morning, if you are sowing on this morning. I told someone the other day, I said, when it comes to ministry, I said, I've never missed a budget. I said, the only budget I've ever missed is when it was for me. Good morning, John Crockton from Texas. Texas. 
So I thank the Lord. Thank you, Brother Ali, Deacon Ali. So those that are sowing this morning, thank you, Brother Rodney. Thank you, Sister Don Thurlin. Thank you, Sister Danielle Evans. Sister Danielle Evans, she will be in Orlando. I am finally getting to meet Sister Danielle Evans. Um, oh, yes. L let me tell you something. One thing that I don't play with, I don't, I don't play with seeds. Um, my daughter is on here, Don Thurlin. And the other, I believe it was the other week. Thank all of you all who are sewing this morning. Um, I'm going to tell you something that happened. Um, here it is, Sister Dawn. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, Sister Dawn is my daughter, her and her husband, and they were the first people <laughs> who told me the Lord said, you ought to be our father in the gospel. I was like, I ain't know. I said, you must be talking about Brother Prince or Moody and Nate. <laughs> said, maybe they need to be your father in the gospel. But um, a couple of weeks ago, I gave them a word, and I said, the Lord is going to send you. The Lord is about to give you a win. And they came into um, an inheritance. And I woke up to my cash app and everything going off. And it was thousands of dollars. And I said to Don, I said, Don, I'm going to ask you a question. And I said, but I have to ask you. And I called her. And she said, what is it? I said, now you sold this money into the ministry. I said, but as you know, I'm about to move. And I said, and if it's okay, would you mind if you take that seed and sow it into my life? Because there's some things I need to do. And she said, well, Pastor, you can use it. I said, no, I can't use it unless you give me permission to use it. Because you did not send it to me. You sent it to Kingdom Alliance. Y'all y'all ain't going to go with me on this morning. Deacon Ali, they, 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 they're not ready for this type of transparency. Sister Sherry, even though I had access to the account, I didn't have the authority to take that seed I said now if you sow it to me I said I will use it I said but you have to give me permission y'all better hear me so when people send money and they say well oh well I sold a thousand dollars into um the ministry and so you can use it no I can't because you didn't sow that into me you sold that into the ministry that ain't my money <laughs> but one thing my father taught me don't mess up the church money can't hear nobody he said if people can't trust you with money you will never have a successful ministry you better hear me access uh-huh is not authority and so you know what i did i said if you tell me don thurler didn't i did it and she said pastor i cannot believe that level of authority that you that that level of transparency i said i can't do it i said she said pastor it is my, she said, I am, she said, we are so blessed to be able to sow into you. And then she sowed another seed. And I said, girl, keep on sowing. In the words of my uncle, the girl, keep on sowing. <laughs> but I just wanted to say that because many times what people do in ministry, my brother, Elder Prince Purcell is on here. My brother's a real steward. He's a real steward. And so what I'm saying, he knows is the truth. Sometimes people say, well, I'm going to just take this from over here because I have access to it. No, it ain't mine. Don sold that money into Kingdom Alliance. I told somebody that on this week. They said, well, no, I, I sold this into the ministry and I thought it was for you. I said, that wasn't for me. That was for the ministry. And that money is still in that ministry account. It's not my money. So any preacher who's watching me, especially young preachers, let me help you. Just because you have access to it doesn't mean that you have authority to take it. And I know we teach Malachi 3, and I don't want to make nobody mad, but if you go back to the first chapter of Malachi, you will find out that the rebuke was to the priests because they were the ones that were taking the money. And the Lord said, I'm going to sprinkle, I'm going to sprinkle, I'm going to put dung on your face. And I have rejected you from reigning over my, my, my sacrifice and my altars. Then we come to Malachi, or will a man rob God? That is a dialogue. It wasn't to the people because the people couldn't bring the money or anything into the storehouse. They had to try the priest so pre preachers i'm just saying before you go attack the people and tell them you're going to be cursed in the third chapter you got to start at the first chapter and show the people that the priests were cursed because god couldn't trust them with what the people were given tanya did i do okay all right i just i just i just wanted to be clear on that 
because you know the, listen i'm this is my joke for the friday and i'm finished the seven day adventist church the church of god in christ church okay you got the apostolic church they say jesus only you got the church of god in christ they say um father son and the holy ghost you got the church of god in christ international they say they don't believe you got to tear for the holy ghost church of god in christ believe that you do got to tear how do you go down in his name when you're baptized apostolic say in jesus name Kojic say father son and the holy ghost baptist say in the name of the father son and the holy ghost and in jesus name but every reformation that you go to they have will a man rob god they can't agree on nothing else but the money. <laughs> you can go to the Seventh-day Adventist. You can go to the Apostolic. You can go to the Church of God. You can go to the Church of God in Prophecy. You can go to the Full Gospel, Missionary Baptist, and every Reformation agrees, will a man rob God? They can't agree on nothing else, but they can agree, will a man rob God? Now, that ain't right. All right. I'm, I'm just I'm just teaching y'all the book. I know some press go like, he, he's just telling everything. Yeah, I'm going to tell the truth. You don't have to give people prophecies to get them to give. Just produce your assignment. Be consistent in your assignment. Sherelle, is that funny? Sherelle, it's the truth, though. You can go to every Reformation. You, you a praise and worship leader. You can go to the Seventh-day Adventists. Go to every Reformation. They may can't agree on clothes. They may can't agree on doctoral practices. They may not agree on certain things. But I promise you one thing. When they give you that envelope, or that envelope, you gonna see, will a man rob God? <laughs> Lord, we can't agree on nothing else. We can't agree on whether homosexuality is right. We can't agree whether is, is adultery wrong or this, this, or that. But we can agree we need your money. According to Malachi, you gonna be cursed if you don't give it to us. I don't use Malachi. I use the scripture here, what a man of God said. Well, a man, what, what he says, let every man give according to how he's purposed in his heart to give. And when he give, do not give grudgingly. Do not give sparingly. Do not give out of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. My God, my God. So said, Spears said, prayer requests, possible COVID exposure at work. And even in this, God is going to keep you. And Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus as you kept this leader that she watches every morning. Father, so shall it be unto her in the name of Jesus. Sister uh, Chantel said, this is confirmation. I, I just wanted to tell the truth. That's why some pastors, they don't want me coming to their church. I'm going to tell the truth. They, they're like, no, nah, don't, don't bring him. Because <laughs> he going to tell the truth. I'm going to tell the truth. I'm going to tell the truth. Stop manipulating God's people. Stop going to Malachi 3 and you skip Malachi 1. Who stops at the who starts in the third chapter of a book and read it? Come on now. Even God in the first chapter in what in the beginning started the first chapter to teach the people the whole book. Okay. <laughs> I said stop, are you supposed to use Malachi? We are a New Testament church, honey. You got to give according to how it's purposed in your heart. Because if you giving because you're not trying to be cursed. First thing, I can't even teach you you curse. If you watch this, if Jesus has already been, if Jesus has already been to the cross, I can't curse what God has already corrected. So we can't teach people they're going to be cursed if the blood has already redeemed us. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Behold, all things have passed away. Behold, all things are made new. I can't do that. I says, I got to teach the book. I got to teach it the right way. All right, listen, I love all of you all and you all that did not have a hundred dollar seed to give today. You say, Pastor, I just want to sow something. I want you to just sow your best seed. Because everyone watching this live, if you on this live, you have something to give. Because everyone on this live prospers. And I want you all to get ready, Sister Sabrina, for some unexpected blessings. Please keep Sister Cynthia in prayer, Sister Cynthia Jackson in prayer. Sister Cheryl Williams. <laughs> Sister Cheryl, y'all gonna get me fired at the kingdom. Well, they gonna take this and screenshot like, who is this ninja? Teaching the people the truth. Said, right, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Um, and another thing, when you sow a seed, oh God, I don't know if I wanna say this. You can't open up what's never been closed with a seed. Now, I know a lot of people say, well, if you sow this seed, this is going to open up for you. When we wake up in the morning, the heavens are already open. It is because <laughs> of the Bible says that it's because of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. So every one of you all that are watching me on this morning, 
I want you to hear this. When I come on and preach, the heavens are already open. The Lord is already ministering to us because it is grace and mercy and the word that is over our life that causes the heavens to open. We cannot manipulate God. We sow because he gives seed to the sower. But I can't sow a seed, watch this, and remain out of right standings with God and think I'm going to see the blessings of the Lord. No, no. That's what the people in the Bible wanted to do, Isis, when they saw the apostles operating in the anointing and they said, how can we purchase this? You can't purchase what God did not purpose for you to carry. I'm trying to help somebody this morning. That many people say, if I get around this person, if I get around this person, God is going to give me this anointing. He's going to give me this. Not if he didn't purpose for you to care. Even the prophet said, he said, what can I do for you before I leave you? He said, I want a double portion. He said, well, if you see me at the time I go up, if it be the Lord's will, so shall it be unto you. What he was saying is, I don't have the authority to lay a mantle on you that God may have not ordained you to carry. Okay, that's a whole nother teaching. <clears throat> Listen, I love all of you all. And you all have an awesome Friday. I have a long day. I'm heading to Statesboro, Georgia now. Then I'm heading to Atlanta, Georgia today. I'm going to be packing. I will be in Orlando, Florida this week. So you all pray safe, safe travels. Um, now, Isis, I don't know what the 500 hopes are. You're going to have to inbox me that. <laughs> I see I, I see you got a sense of humor like like me so don't get me going in my comedy show all right so listen um you all pray for me on this morning um I rested um and I'm about to get on the road I will be on the road in 25 minutes all right so listen I live to love you and I fight for you daily <clears throat> and I want you to know that I am excited about seeing you all in Florida our first inaugural the Center of the Servant Conference, Embassy Suites, Orlando, Florida. And I thank God that we are doing something, Deacon Ali, that we can be proud of. Okay? I am excited about having the time to fellowship and see you all go forth in the anointing and go forth in producing the sin of the Lord, even in Orlando, Florida. And all shall be well. Sister L.A. Spears, we are praying for you. We are praying for um, Elder Lauren Simmons. We are praying for Sister Cynthia. She has the enormity of the task of her in this season. And so keep our family under prayer. And listen, and I will see you all. Monday morning at 7.30 when we are preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are loving on you God's people and we are watching God change lives one conversation at a time. We are closing out. This is Malachi Singleton. His new single Destiny featuring Calvin Ford. Go support them and I will see you all Monday morning. me